Our clinic specializes in the evaluation and treatment of children with speech and language disorders. Typically we see children from 18 months of age all the way up to 18 years of age. Um, but we also do see some adults and these would be adults who have suffered from a stroke, brain injury or other type of neurological disorder or certain types of speech or voice disorders. We see children with a wide range of speech and language disorders. For example, we see children who have articulation or language delays early on. Uh, we see children with language disorders where the language issues have persisted into elementary school age and beyond. We see children who have articulation issues. They may have a simple articulation issue with one or two sounds. They may have a multiple articulation issue where there are multiple sounds involved. Children may have speech production issues where their articulation and their clarity is impaired because maybe they have some, some motor weakness, motor issues, or um, what we call um, issues with being able to sequence sounds and syllables into words, perhaps um, verbal dyspraxia. We also see children with speech production issues as related to their voice. Um, as well as if they have fluency issues or you know, if they have stuttering problems. Maybe they have uh, language learning disabilities where their understanding of language or their expression of language is getting in the way of their academics. Um, this would also translate into problems uh, perhaps with reading and writing. Children can have problems in comprehension of language as well as in expression and that would be children who are having a hard time understanding what they hear. Um, it could be vocabulary, it could be certain types of sentences and sentence structure they're not understanding. Maybe they're not being able to integrate information um, when they hear a lot of it, like at a paragraph level or in conversation. Expression issues would be their ability to talk or to formulate what they want to say. Or they may have uh, language issues in, the term, in terms of what we call pragmatics and that would be more social use of language, uh, the dynamic of conversation and the give and take and the reciprocity that's needed um, to initiate a conversation and keep it going, um, to be an attentive listener as well as to be a good conversational partner and, and there's multiple aspects to conversation and, and social language as well. I would say that um, speech and language problems are not as uncommon as uh, people might think they are. They do occur on a scale from mild to severe and I tell parents that the most important thing if they're concerned that their child does have a problem um, is to get it identified and to get it identified early. Studies have shown that the earlier you can get intervention, the better, with a better prognosis, and it does lead to better treatment outcomes. There are a lot of children who are identified later in life because they've been able to keep up with their peers and keep up with the schoolwork. But as language gets more difficult, either in you know how we relate and converse or as language gets more difficult in the academics, then problems do surface. And that is a perfect time to get remediation. And we've seen very good outcomes with older children as well. Um, oftentimes, parents are the best source for understanding their own child and understanding whether their child is having a problem developing either speech or whether their child is having a problem developing language. Um, and oftentimes um, pediatricians are a good source to help uh, parents identify if there is a problem in development occurring. Um, but I always tell parents um, that if they have that gut feel, in addition to talking with their pediatrician, that they should contact a speech and language therapist to talk about it and see if there indeed is a problem or there's a potential problem occurring.
Well, once you know that your child does need an evaluation, perhaps having talked to a speech pathologist, for example, here, we would go ahead and set up an assessment. That is a process that can take anywhere from one session to multiple sessions, uh, from an hour to three or more hours. Part of that is dependent on your child's age and uh, also is determined by how many issues your child may be having and the degree to which your child is having a problem. The assessment allows us to see whether a child does have problems and it gives us a good idea of identifying where their child's strengths are as well as their weaknesses because we do use a child's strengths to be able to bring up the weaker areas. With children who are younger, the toddlers and the early intervention children, the assessment is very play-based. Part of the assessment involves parent interview because it's very important to hear from the parent what is going on and what their child is doing in their natural environment. Then part of the assessment is somewhat structured with the use of um, pictures and, and we ask children questions and we also use toys. We also look at a child's play skills and uh, do part of the assessment through play. Um, assessment for older children beyond early intervention, the school age child, the assessment is a little more structured, a little more formal. We are um, using pictures and various materials to ask and answer questions and to get information from your child regarding areas such as vocabulary and grammar and so forth. Um, however, we really do try to make the assessment process very friendly and relaxed and I would say the majority, if not all, the children feel very comfortable during the assessment process. Therapy is usually either 30 minutes or an hour, once or twice a week, perhaps with more frequency, depending on what a child's needs are. A 30-minute session is usually 25 minutes, which allows us five minutes to talk with a parent and do some transitioning. And a 60-minute session is 50 minutes. And again, that allows us time to transition, to talk with a parent, and make sure that we're all on the same page for the next session to assign any homework and to answer any of your questions. Each session has a number of goals that we're addressing. Uh, we try to achieve these goals in a number of different ways. So in a typical therapy session, we may do direct teaching and skill building, computer activities, play, and then with the older children, we would bring in their school work if it was applicable. In direct teaching, that is working with a child uh, focusing on very specific skills, or what I call skill building. And that typically involves a child um, sitting at a table with a therapist, although for a younger child, it may be on the floor. And we're using very specific materials and toys to be very focused and targeted and get multiple responses on a particular target so that we really are building and reinforcing that skill. Then we might transition to using the computer in the therapy session where we are still targeting the same or similar goals but the computer allows for the therapy to be a little bit more open-ended and a little more spontaneous because when computers are used in an interactive and a dynamic way, not just in passive listening, but in a dynamic way, then a child is able to express themselves on a broader range of topics, broader range of areas, and allow us to cultivate um, greater speech, or for that matter, um, greater comprehension, depending on the program that we're using. And then we might incorporate play. And play is really very open-ended. Um, some people don't realize that language development even starts before a child begins to speak. And it is so important to develop human interaction through reciprocal games and through play. Um, 
the first meaningful language that occurs occurs when a child is looking at you, laughing with you, uh, responding to you, whether that's verbally or non-verbally. And so for the very young ones, we start with trying to develop that early play and broadening it into communication. Uh, that play continues to be vital um, in terms of um, expanding their language, in terms of applying their language, um, in terms of them even organizing uh, what language is and how to use it, not only to just talk, but to talk about their own experiences and to talk with you and to talk with other people. Play, when we're working in terms of a therapeutic sense, can be more structured. We help to set up situations in order to get certain language and vocabulary that we're trying to achieve. But the other very